Hey everybody. Well, today I thought we could do a fun little video looking at all the bloopers that are in the classic television show Lost in Space. One of my favorites when I was a kid, mainly because of the robot. As you all know, I love the robot from Lost in Space. But uh, the show had a ton of bloopers. Uh, some of them were pretty blatant, some of them were continuity errors, and some of them were just kind of weird. And so I thought we'd start with the black and white first season episodes here. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get all of them in one video, because I think there's quite a few in the first season, but we'll see how this goes. But uh, we're, we're going to go and just kind of go through episode through episode, and, and I'll try to cover at least the main ones. I'm not sure I'm going to get all of them, but we'll try to get as many as we can. So here we go. Now this is from the first episode, The Reluctant Stowaway, and this isn't so much a blooper as it is a curiosity. Um, early on in the show, we actually saw the robot. You can see his, his feet right here. They're separated. Uh, Bob May was the actor inside the robot, a very underappreciated actor because he never got credit for the role, and he kind of suffered in that costume. And having been in a Lost in Space robot costume for many hours, I can totally sympathize with him in what he had to go through. But um, uh, in the early episodes, they actually had him walking in the costume. You can see he's actually walking in it. And he uh, actually got cut up pretty bad in there. There was some sharp um, edges and stuff inside, and he came out kind of bloody. And so uh, they ended up scrapping the idea of having him walk. But, uh, you know, they would later just pull him on wires to have him roll around. But early on, he had to walk in this thing, and I, I'm sure that couldn't have been easy. But it's pretty cool to see him walking because you only see it in the first few episodes. When John gets all suited up in the spacesuit to go outside to repair the antenna, um, Don here is asking him all kinds of questions, and you can hear Guy Williams' voice answering over the, um, the transmitter there. But oddly enough, the very last question that Don says right here is, can you fix it? And then you hear a different voice saying, sure can try. And it's obviously a stagehand, and you can kind of tell he's off, the, uh, off to the side somewhere. They just forgot to put in Guy Williams' voice, and it's really odd. So I'll, I'll let you hear it real quick here. Okay, and, and that's it. I can't show too much because uh, every time I try to show stuff on these shows, I get co a copyright claim. So anyway, I did want you to hear that voice. You can tell that it's clearly a different voice, and it's really strange. For whatever reason, they just forgot to fix that. Now, this is episode two, and it was titled The Derelict. And after Dr. Smith shoots these creatures, which makes them mad, <laughs> they all come chasing after them. But there's a scene where you can see these two creatures here, uh, this one and this one, coming towards the camera, and if you look closely, right down here you can see a tennis shoe. So one of the prop guys is actually pushing these creatures, and you can actually inadvertently see his foot there, and it's, it's pretty funny. But it's cool that you can actually see it. This was the third episode called Island in the Sky, and although this isn't a blooper, it's just an interesting thing to note. First of all, the robot has the claw right here that has the uh, extra extended bit that he can grab the chess pieces. We saw that a couple of times in the show, but they didn't use it very often, but it's kind of neat they had that attachment for him. You'll also notice how the robot is leaning back quite a bit. That's because in order for Bob May to see where he was putting that chess piece, he's actually looking through the lower vent on the front right here. So by leaning back, he can kind of look straight down and see through the vent and see the chess board. So that's why he was doing that. Also in this episode, this is the only time we ever get to see the robot soil sampler which comes out of that little door on the bottom of his tread section. It takes little soil samples, that little drill-like thing turns. The only time we ever see this again, it's a solid tube, and we see it again in War of the Robots, where he creates a smoke screen so that he can de defeat Robbie the Robot. But uh, it's kind of a cool little thing, and you can also see how the prop guys just kind of um, didn't really cut the, the little teeth on it very straight. You can see that they're all uneven. So it's kind of cool, but it's a shame they never use that more. As the crew was heading back to the Jupiter 2 in the chariot, they get attacked by this giant electrified tumbleweed, <laughs> which is pretty wild. And a lot of times this scene was cut when it was shown in syndication, especially on the Sci-Fi channel. But there is a blooper right here. You can actually see there is a, uh, a power cable right here on the back of the chariot. And for whatever reason, they have it plugged into something, probably for some electrical stuff in there, but it was visible in the scene. Near the end of the episode, the camera pans over to Will working on the chariot. And if you look closely in the reflection of the glass of the chariot, you can see somebody's face right here. See it right there? So it was one of the crew members that uh, was being reflected in the glass. It's pretty cool. In the fourth episode, titled There Were Giants in the Earth, 
As the robot walks around the control panel here to turn off the force field, his lights inadvertently go off. You can see that the lights are not on in his head. They just shut off for no reason. And then somebody must have realized that the lights went off. So now when he turns around, the lights suddenly turn back on. In this scene, Will was saying goodbye to the robot because they've decided to get on the chariot to get onto a warmer side of the planet before they freeze over on this side. So Will gets mad and pulls the robot's power pack. But in the very next scene, the robot is suddenly missing. He was supposed to be right there, and now he's gone. And that's because this scene was actually from the original pilot before the Dr. Smith and Robot uh, characters were added to the show. They were late additions, so they were just reusing footage here. But that's why there's a blooper right there. This is episode 5, titled The Hungry Sea. And this is the only time that we ever see the robot where his legs are deflated. You can see they've, they're totally smooshed down. So this is after Don shot the robot because he thought that the robot was coming to attack him, but he was actually sending a message. But it's really cool that you can actually see how his legs can completely collapse like that. And this is the only time we ever saw it in the entire series. Now in episode six titled Welcome Stranger, the uh, group here decides to go check out what this spaceship is that landed on the planet that they're on. And as they go to investigate, you can see here that the robot's power pack is missing and yet he's fully functional. And I don't know how they could have blatantly not seen that because in the earlier scenes, like the far shots, he has his power pack in. In these close-ups, he doesn't, and yet he's fully working. And as we know, the robot doesn't work without his power pack. So somebody messed up. Skipping ahead to episode eight, this one is titled Invaders from the Fifth Dimension. Now there's a really bad blooper that occurs in this one. Now Bob May, who was inside the robot costume, Oftentimes it would take the tread section off of the bottom so that he had more freedom to move around in the costume. So his legs would just stick out of the bottom of the rubber treads. Now the, uh, the cameraman didn't zoom in quick enough and you can see these bushes right in here. If you watch closely, you will actually be able to see Bob May's legs and a power cable sticking out of the back. See it right there? It's really bad. And so it's kind of cool, but it's bad that you can see. I mean, even as a kid, when I was watching this in repeats, um, I, I noticed that and it was it was pretty blatant and it was funny too because when this show when this whole series was converted to blu-ray because as you can see this is a very nice and clean uh, copy of this so um, they actually debated whether or not to erase that out or fix it somehow but everybody loves that blooper so much all the fans do that they decided to just go and leave it in and I'm glad they did I'm glad they didn't fix it because I think it's pretty cool this is episode 13 and it's titled One of Our Dogs is Missing and the only blooper in this episode is um, oddly enough you can see John right here and he is firing his laser pistol and you can see the light on the top of the laser pistol and it's really weird if you watch this scene you can see him he uh, he shoots the gun you see the light turn on and he kind of freezes and then he um, is done shooting it because the light goes off and then there's some more movement and then he shoots it again and the light is on and then he freezes again and so what was supposed to happen is the special effects guys were supposed to um, add in the laser beam effect shooting the monster but they never did they never added it in there and it just looks really strange so for whatever reason they decided either not to add it in or they forgot to add it in and it's possible maybe um, because everybody had to freeze in order for them to add that in there they weren't doing it and it just didn't look right plus the smoke re rising up they can't freeze that, so uh, maybe they just decided to scrap it. But I kind of feel sorry for Guy Williams because he's trying his best to make that look, you know, right. And because the laser beam isn't in there, they really screwed up on that. Um, the other thing that was weird about this episode is a, a dog appears in this episode. And, um, and then the dog is gone. You never see him again. It's just kind of weird how they just kind of drop that, uh, the character of the dog out of this episode. You never saw it again after that. In episode 14, this one's called Attack of the Monster Plants. And in this scene, you can see that one of the robot's ribs on his vent right there had broken off. You can see there that he's missing one right there. And so uh, they're made of acrylic. And so they broke off, and I guess they just never got around to replacing it. This is episode 16, and it was called The Keeper Part 1. So it was a two-part episode. Um, arguably, probably one of the better episodes of the first season. Now, The Keeper... He had left his staff, the staff that he carried, you can see it had a little light on the top of it, and it had grown all these flowers all over it here. Now, uh, he left it there, but in the next scene, there's a close-up, and you can see that there is a blooper. 
So the keeper says, that's the second time today that I forgot to turn it off. And as he turns around, you can clearly see that he's got the staff right here in his hand. It's a real quick cut, but for whatever reason, he's actually holding the staff. So it doesn't make any sense that he was actually holding it when the line refers to the fact that he left his staff behind. I, I still don't understand how that blooper even occurred. This is episode 17, and it's The Keeper Part 2. Now, this isn't a blooper, but I just wanted to point out this giant spider was actually used in an episode of Gilligan's Island as well. And so it's kind of funny how they ended up reusing this same prop. But um, it's kind of weird to see it used in two different shows. But, yep, that's the same spider that was used in an episode of Gilligan's Island. At the end of this episode, Dr. Smith is trapped inside the cage, and there's a little humorous bit at the end here where everybody's laughing but if you look closely now you can see the reflection of uh, Maureen Robinson June Lockhart right here this is actually the cameraman right here you can see his shadow so if I go frame by frame you'll be able to see that they that both uh, June Lockhart and Guy Williams get pushed out of the way by the cameraman you can see his sh uh, shoulder right here in his head now you'll see them both kind of get pushed out and then the camera comes up for the close-up and you can see the reflection of the camera right in here and they kind of bump uh june lockhart and guy williams out of the way but there you can clearly see the guy now you can see his back right here and you can see his head right there uh, his back is here and his head right there and you can see the camera right here oh, i'm sorry right there so yeah it's a pretty cool blooper but it's a really obvious uh reflection right there yeah so <laughs> It's cool to see it because you can actually see there's like tape or something on the film rolls. You can kind of see it right over in this section right here. So it's a pretty clear uh, reflection. I think it's pretty neat that it shows up on there. This is episode 20 and it's titled War of the Robots, which is one of my favorite episodes from season one, mainly because the robots in it a lot and Robbie the robot makes a guest appearance and these two robots have to battle it out. And both of these robots were created by Robert Kinoshita. That's why a lot of people get them mixed up. So they were both made and designed by the same guy, or at least he designed both of them. Now you'll notice um, the neon on the robot looks like it's all messed up right here. See how it's crooked and it's spaced out unevenly? I think what happened is there was an accident on the set that day that resulted in the robot's neon being replaced. I saw some kind of a... Um, it was some kind of a sheet that was talking about uh, some stuff that went on behind the scenes of the show and it mentions something about the neon getting broken and you can clearly tell that the prop guys had to kind of piece together whatever pieces of neon they still had just to kind of make the bottom part of it because the top part still looks like it's okay also the robot looks really rough in this episode you can see he's got these um these indentations like they're like screw holes or something going on over here there's another one over here notice there's a scar mark there like a scorch um, the Robbie the robot ends up scorching the robot right there. So that means this scene was filmed after that scene, even though it shows up early in the episode. It's kind of weird. Also, you'll start to notice that on his uh, wrists, he's really starting to get a lot of wear and tear on there as well. Because in the very first episode, those are all pristine. So Bob May was kind of rough in that episode, in the uh, robot costume. But a lot of these uh, indentations were caused by the pins that are right in here. And down here, that's how the robot's arms get locked in. But you can tell that he uh, has starting to show a little bit of wear and tear by this time. This scene appears just a little bit later. And now we can see that the neon for the robot is completely back to normal. You can see how there's a, uh, it's all, you know, we don't have the spacing or the problems going on in there. Which means that this scene was filmed early on in the episode. Um, so, you know, the early episodes of the of uh, the show, the robot had 16 rows of neon. You can see how close the neon tubes are right here. Later on, I think it ended up being about 10 rows, I think was the standard. So it was weird. The robot was constantly changing throughout the show. There was things that were always different about him. You could tell that they were constantly doing maintenance on him in one way, shape, or form. But uh, anyway, I, I'm guessing that this scene was filmed early, before the neon got broken. Now, this is the second and the last time that we end up seeing this little door being used on the robot's tread section. The first time, if you remember, it was a soil sampler. And in this episode, a bunch of smoke comes out of there because the robot creates a smoke screen so that he can sneak around behind Robbie and zap him. Bob May, who was inside the robot, had a funny story about this scene at the end of this episode. He was saying that these close-up shots were filmed kind of late in the day. It was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. They'd had a long day. 
and they were starting to get, you know, kind of silly. And so, um, as Dr. Smith was polishing the robot right here, uh, Bob May goes lower, and then he'd, he'd move the uh, polishing uh, rag right there lower, and then he goes lower, and then uh, Jonathan Harris went even lower, and then Bob May goes, I love you, and then <laughs> I guess everybody started laughing on the set. But I always thought it was kind of a funny little story about this little scene. Now, this is episode 23, and it's called The Space Trader. And there was a very bad incident that occurred. Now, at the very beginning of this episode, um, a big storm comes up, and there's all this wind blowing and everything. And so everybody decides to run into the Jupiter 2, and Dr. Smith is worried about his painting. But as you can see here, the robot is going up the ramp, and he's at a really, you know, strange angle right there. I mean, he's tipped over pretty far, and the robot is top-heavy as it is. Now, if you look under here, you'll see the, um, see the uh, tread section, how it's it's not even touching the, the ground. It's not even touching the ramp. It's actually tipped far up. So uh, the robot was being pulled by a cable that runs right on here. You can probably see just, the, well, not real. I think it's just a shadow on there. But what happened is Mark Goddard actually, as he was coming up the ramp, had stepped on the cable. And um, the actors are told to avoid the cable because, you know, you don't want to have any problems with the robot uh, being stopped because they're stepping on it. But because uh, he was going up this ramp, when um, when Mark stepped on the uh, cable, it, it made the robot kind of stop, and you'll see him kind of jerk a little bit as he's going up the ramp. And then as soon as he, he stepped off the cable, the slack was let up, and then that's what ended up pulling the robot pretty far and a little bit harder and faster than he was supposed to. You can see uh, Angela Cartwright right here. She's already reacting to the fact that the robot is heading right to her, and she's kind of putting her hands in front of her. And you can also see that um, Guy Williams is looking down because he already knows that there's something wrong. So what happened is uh, Bob May fell over. He actually fell backwards in the robot on the ramp right there, and it was pretty bad. It actually knocked him out. So, of course, you know, somebody yelled cut, and they had to run over there and check on Bob, and it turns out, you know, he was knocked out in the costume, and, and uh, Bob said the first thing he remembered when he came to, they had taken the head off the uh, robot to check on him, and there's June Lockhart with her... Uh, with his head in her lap, making sure he was okay. And the first thing that came out of his mouth was, you know, how's the robot? Which I think kind of made her a little upset because he was so worried about the robot costume. I guess he wasn't under contract at the time and he was worried that, you know, if, if anything happened to the robot costume, he was out of a job. He was really worried. So uh, <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Now, I think they sent him to the hospital to make sure he was okay because in this scene, after they showed Dr. Smith being blown in the wind, Immediately they cut back to this and these guys are a little bit out of place from where they were if you kind of compare it from frame to frame. But if you look closely at the robot, you can see that his little side panel here is crooked. So they, they forgot to straighten that out and also his bubble is crooked. You can see the top part of his bubble is actually facing more towards us and he's also faced away from us because I think the neon got broken. So unfortunately the robot suffered a little bit of damage from this. In the following scene where they're all sitting inside the Jupiter 2, once again the robot is faced away from us. Now, by this time, it looks like they straightened out his bubble, but he doesn't move at all, which means Bob May probably probably wasn't in there. And because he's faced away, it's probably because the neon was broken once again or needed to be repaired. So, uh, kind of sad that that happened, and I wish there was footage of it in some of the bloopers or something, but uh, unfortunately, I don't know what happened to that film. It's probably somewhere in storage and it would be interesting to see it but uh, poor Bob May he suffered a lot in that costume also during that windstorm this big huge cylinder goes rolling and crashing into that rock and if you look closely when the lightning is flashing you can see the shadow of the rock up against the background so this whole painted background you can actually see the shadow of the rock on it as Dr. Smith and Will approach the traders camp they kind of go behind that big rock right there but what's really weird is as soon as they go behind that rock, they immediately appear on the other side, which means that they wouldn't have had enough time to go behind that rock. And that's because uh, they had to time it just right. These two people here are actually stunt actors. And you can kind of tell, especially with Will, that you, that's not him. So I think they were worried that these dogs that were going to come out were, you know, it's a possibility that maybe the actors would have gotten bit. Uh, they weren't really sure. They didn't want to take the chance. So that is not uh, Jonathan Harris or Bill Moomy in there. That's actually their stunt actors. In this scene, everybody's playing ball together. And it was pretty cool because Judy actually throws the ball to the robot. And he catches it, which just goes to show the talent that Bob May 
uh, could perform in that robot so well. I, some of the things that he was capable of doing. Now, Bob May did the voice of the robot on set so that the actors could interact with him, but they would go back and dub over his voice with Dick Tufeld, who was the announcer of the voice, because they wanted the robot to have more of a, a robust voice. Now, uh, in this scene, because everybody's laughing and playing together, they couldn't dub over um, the robot laughing, and you can actually hear Bob May go, ah, ha, ha. And edit. It's kind of odd to hear that voice come out of the robot. So here you can kind of see, hear, hear it. See right there, and it sounds really weird. And every now and then, there's a couple scenes throughout the the uh, series where they had to do that, and you can actually hear Bob May's voice. Now this is episode 26. It's titled "All That Glitters," and in this episode, you can see Doctor Smith has got this ring on his neck, and it actually lights up. So the blooper here is as he's walking down the ramp, you can actually see the power cable that is connected to his leg. So the power cable that lights up the, uh, the uh, collar right there actually runs down his entire costume, out his pant leg, and right there. So as he's walking down the ramp, you can actually see him dragging that behind him. But it's pretty obvious in that scene. Okay, so this is episode 27, The Lost Civilization. Now... At the very beginning of the episode, as Don and uh, John and Will, and I think the robot is with them as well, they come around this little boulder, or this big boulder right here, but uh, they drive too close to it, and they actually move the boulder as they drive. So right here you'll see, see, watch that boulder, see how it got scooted? <laughs> it's pretty funny. So that was a complete goof up. Obviously the rock was fake. Later in the episode, there's a big fight that comes up. And the robot smacks one of the guards right in the stomach, but his head actually comes loose. And right here, right when he smacks the guard, you can see that the collar has come loose from his torso. And you can actually see inside right there. So somebody didn't fasten the head on very good. In episode 28, this one's titled A Change of Space, Dr. Smith gets turned into an old man when he takes a trip into space in an alien vehicle and it renders him as an old man. Now in this scene he's talking to Don and um, he goes on this rant and when he starts yelling it actually startles Mark Goddard. You can actually see him jump in real life and as you can see he's biting his lip right there because it made him start to laugh and so he quickly left the scene before he started to laugh but it's pretty funny that he's, he uh, actually had to bite his lip. Now this was episode 29 and it was titled Follow the Leader. It would be the last episode of season one. Now uh, John Robinson was taken over by this alien, but in this scene, uh, I, I paused it a split second before it was actually supposed to be seen. But John, uh, John Robinson or Guy Williams is actually standing there already before the explosion and then right after the explosion. It's supposed to look like he appeared when the uh, explosion occurred, but he was actually already there. <laughs> so they just didn't quite cut it soon enough. So there we go, all the bloopers that I can possibly remember or think of from season one. There was quite a few. There's more bloopers to come in season two and season three. I'll do two separate videos for those. But uh, <laughs> this show has been uh, reproduced in you know high definition, which was fantastic that they were able to do that. I guess Sheila Allen, the wife of Irwin Allen, who produced this show, footed the money, uh, you know, to make it happen, uh, something like $200,000, because 20th Century Fox wasn't interested in uh, converting this to Blu-ray or high definition. But when they found out that she went through the trouble to do that, they actually reimbursed her. So I thought that was great. Unfortunately, um, I think it only sold about 8,000 units after it first came out. And so I don't know if they ever made their money back on it. But because of that, all hope was lost for ever having this show converted to maybe 4K. Also, they found out that um, because the show was shot in 35 millimeter, is how it was, you know, uh, able for them to be able to uh, convert it to high definition. They also found out this show was filmed in widescreen, which was very rare back then, and it was such widescreen that uh, on the sides you could actually see um, where the set ended. There were like ladders and lights and stuff like that. So when they had to decide what aspect ratio to put this in. They decided to cut the sides down rather than, um, you know, go cut these sides down versus the top and the bottom. They uh, they actually had two episodes that I got to see, and I think there's one uh, as an it's a bonus material um, option on uh, one of the DVDs where you can actually watch one of the episodes in widescreen, which looks pretty amazing. 
Uh, it's unfortunate they didn't do all of them that way, but I don't know, probably because of the cost. But anyway, I'm just glad they were able to get this on here. Um, because I was in the B9 Robot Builders Club when this came out, we actually got a sneak peek at several episodes before they were even released. So it was really cool. We got to see these before other people uh, got to see them, before they were actually released. So, But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed all these bloopers, and I will uh, be sure to do Season 2 and Season 3 as well. But if you did enjoy it, uh, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe too. I'd really appreciate that. So I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one.